just came from Los Angeles. It was raining and cold, and here we are in beautiful Orlando. <laughs> this is wonderful. I love Comic Cons because we make our TV shows usually on a sound stage behind a closed door. It is soundproof, and you never get really to see or meet the wonderful people who watch. And if you didn't watch, I wouldn't be here. You are the other part of my circle, and I am so grateful to see you. was on the set of Barry. Barry is my show. Repeat after me, April 16th. April 16th. And at uh, 10 o'clock there are the, is the premiere of the last season of Barry. Uh, and it was, it, it is a shock. Uh, you know, you're, you're going you're gonna to say to me the next time we meet, that was a comedy. <laughs> but I was on the set of Barry, and I said to the costumer, the person who watches me very carefully, and I said, you know, I, I, the belt is not working. I need a different kind of belt. I, I pull it so tight, and my pants slip. And she looked at me, and she said, that's because you have no hips. <laughs> so let me just say, my pants are slipping. <laughs> okay, but I'm going to ignore it and just carry on because to pull my pants up now would be like, you know, I, I knew it would have to report me. <laughs> so um, I was born and raised in New York City. Uh, and I was horrible in school, so I'm going to tell every young person, anybody who is in school, anybody who's ever been in school, how you learn has nothing to do with how brilliant you are. I took geometry for four years, same course. <laughs> I took it in regular school, I took it in summer school, regular school, summer school, regular school, summer school, regular school, regular school, regular school, regular school. I finally passed for the D minus in my senior year of summer school. If I didn't pass, I wouldn't be able to get into one of 28 colleges I applied to, the only one that said yes. Can I just say that was in the summer in August of 1963. Since that day, not one human being has ever said hypotenuse to me. <laughs> what were they thinking? I finally figured out that we have to teach our children how they learn, not what we think they should learn. I was told of the dumb dog. Very lovely people, very supportive. <laughs> Adorable people. And, uh, you know, I wanted to be an actor ever since I was old enough to reason. I don't know how it came into my body, I don't know how it came into my mind, but if people were born to do something, I was born to try and be an actor. Everybody told me I will never make it because I was bad at lunch. I was bad at science. I was bad at English. The only thing I was really good at was walking home. <laughs> you know, we read a novel in the 10th grade. It was called Tale of Two Cities. I read the cover. <laughs> that was basically it. I never actually opened the cover. But I just persevered. You know, I will tell you that um, I was a negative thinker. I can't, I won't, I'll never. Because I believed what these adults were saying to me. You know, you can't kid around with your children, with your grandchildren, with your nephews, with your sons, your daughters, your, your, your nieces. We, we listen to what the adults are saying. 
It's like, you know, we like little ducklings. We follow the duck, the adult duck. Oh, meanwhile, that is the title of my new children's book that comes out in October, Detective Duck. <laughs> well, <I> guess, detective. <laughs> but in listening to you, and I believe that I was stupid like until last Tuesday. <laughs> I was a negative thinker. I looked for the answer. I found it in some unbelievably obscure philosopher. He didn't want me to finish the book because uh, if you don't understand me, don't read my book. So I didn't because I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. But I found his disciple and this is what I learned. You have a negative thought. You say, I have no time for you, and you have to say it out loud. You have to stop the negative thought, because if you finish it, it grows into a thesis of negativity. Here's what I learned. Don't put a period on the end of a negative thought. A negative thought comes in, you replace it with a positive. I did not do anything. <laughs> A negative thought comes into your mind, you stop it, you move it out, I replace it with a positive. My positive is a bunt cake, very moist, with the chocolate chips, no icing. I see the bunt cake, I stop thinking negatively, I keep moving to my dream, and then I get to stand here and talk to you. Yeah. in uh, 1963 that I would never achieve, and in 2023, here I am. And I am no more special than anybody in this room. All I am is tenacious. All I am is I kept my, 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 my eye on the prize. I live by two words, gratitude, and tenacity. Tenacity gets you where you want to go. For anybody in this room that is, uh, uh, doesn't have that word yet in their vocabulary test, tenacity means you stick to it. And gratitude makes it possible to enjoy however windy the road is that gets you where you want to go. Barry, Parks and Rec, and Better Late Than Never, and all your movies, and I just, I just want to tell you that I think you are the biggest mensch around. Mensch is Yiddish for wonderful person. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's true when I, I read about your um, getting the the honor from England from the Queen, from the Queen, yeah. which is huge, and it's seriously just such a thrill for me to be thank here you so with you today. And I want to thank you for coming here. Thank you. True. Thanks. Uh, I have been for so long. What is your name, sir? Wendy. What is it? Wendy. Hi. Um, Mr. Whitmer, I was just wondering hey, uh, if you can hear me. <laughs> um, there's a really powerful scene um, in Happy Days when Richie is saying goodbye to everybody. And uh, I've watched that scene more times than I can count. I love that scene. It's so emotional and powerful. I wonder if you can talk about that scene, what it meant to you. You know, when she showed his mind, yeah. that was, uh, yeah, he had left um, uh, the show because he wanted to be a director. I, I, I wonder how that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he came back for some episodes, and he was now saying goodbye forever because he was going to go off to be a writer. And when I am crying at the door, that's Henry crying, saying goodbye to my wonderful friend, Ron, who was an extraordinary acting partner. Uh, we could take a scene, uh, three pages, at 12 o'clock at night, uh, we could um, read it, memorize it, improvise it, and shoot it three times in 20 minutes. Because we were so connected. Uh, it was like, it's uncanny. I mean, you, you can't learn that. It just is. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, Hi. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm really nervous. 
You are. Okay, I am too. Okay, let me ask you a question. What does it say on your shirt? I'm Kansas City Chiefs. Oh. Um, I've got to meet Patrick Mahomes. I know. Oh. Um, I'm going to be there. I'm just going to be six years ago. So, yeah. So, I'm 100% Chiefs fan. Okay. So, yeah, that was kind of my question. It's kind of hard to come upon, but I kind of want to know exactly who you win and what made you become the Chiefs fan. So, uh, what was the last part of your question? Like, what made you become a Chiefs fan? You know what, I'll tell you. I'm doing a show, uh, the Rich Eisen Show. It is a sports show, uh, it is a podcast, and uh, it's on video somewhere. And uh, he asked me a question. I said, do you know Patrick Mahomes? Now, I'm not a real sports person. I love to fly fish for travel. <laughs> But I tell you that I have a book of photography. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, do you know Patrick Mahomes? Because I think he plays at another level. He's just extraordinary. And I said, you know, I'm going to invite him to my house as soon as I meet him. Uh, he can have chicken stuffed with ricotta and spinach with a reduction sauce that will blow his mind. <laughs> he played that for Patrick when Patrick called into Rich Eisen's show. I was invited to the stadium in Los Angeles to watch them play the Chargers. I went down on the field. I'm standing there, this very short fellow. This massive human being comes running up to me with a smile. You know how you can touch somebody and your finger kind of goes in a little bit? Give in, in a person? Nothing. <laughs> I was like a tank. And he said, I have a surprise for you. And he gave me his jersey. Signed. I'm like a 12 year old. I wear it in my living room, standing up cheering at the Super Bowl. Uh, I was, I'm telling you, it was just a moment, a wonderful moment that I, I was able to have. What is your name? Brendan. What is it? Brendan. Hi. Uh, I had a question to ask. Uh, this is the first time I've ever asked anyone someone famous a question. <laughs> Can I just say I am honored that I am the first? <laughs> um, whether it is for a movie, skit, or a TV show, would you ever want to play Fonzie again? Do you know what? I, I have to tell you that um, I love the Fonzie. He introduced me to the world. He is one of the reasons that a lot of uh, people come to visit me at a Comic Con. But I don't think you, you can't go home again. So many try to recreate the same kind of show, and it just doesn't work. It was in its time, in its place. I went in to audition. I had hair down my shoulders. I changed my voice. I looked at Gary Marshall and I said, hey, don't even do that yet. <laughs> and I'm telling you, uh, uh, I only had a month in Hollywood before I had to go back to New York. I only had uh, enough money for a month to see what I could do from the department of uh, Comedy and Paramount Studios. I, I don't even know what happened to it. And that was 50 years ago. Then they made me six, and they put them in a vault. And uh, one, I water skied in, and they ripped out the lining, so it would be lighter. Uh, then Gary Marshall got one, uh, I got three, and I don't know where the other one is. Uh, one of them is in the Smithsonian. Phil uh, Hund has his jacket in the museum. <laughs> So the question I have for you is, uh, how would you 
Adam Sandler first get together and collaborate on okay. movies? Adam, 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 Adam is a genius. Adam just dresses for you. Adam is amazing. So I was in his Hanukkah song. Okay. Uh, uh, and then I knew somebody who worked with his manager. Hi. You're a brand new person. What is your name? Alvina. Thank you for being here. So I uh, called Adam Sandler and I said, thank you for including me. I, I feel great that you included me in your Hanukkah song. Years later, uh, I was doing one of the worst movies ever made by a human being called Ground Control, mm. starring Kiefer Sutherland. Mm. Yeah, uh, he was great in 24. <laughs> <laughs> but this movie really stunk up the room. <laughs> but during the movie, I got a call, would you like to be in The Water Boy? <laughs> I have been friends with him ever since we've done five movies together. Click. Uh, he is he's in charge of every detail. I'm just great. Well, thank you, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I can coach any any football team uh, that you've got in mind. <laughs> Wednesday, there's still no buddy to play this character. They bring down this young man. He's very quiet, very shy. We all shake hands, he picks up the script, and I say to him in Arnold, he says something about taking Ronnie back to his planet with him, Ron Howard, and I go, hey, if you want to roll, and he goes, and of course, we the West Side Story. <laughs> and I realized, I, at that moment, my only job was to not break up and to get out of his way <laughs> because this man was brilliant. Uh -huh. He absorbed what was happening and then spit it out to the world in a robin way. Mm -hmm. When he did his own show, and we had three cameras uh, when we did it in front of the live audience, three cameras. And uh, Gary Marshall uh, was there at the beginning of Robin's show, of uh, Mork and Mork, uh, Mork and Mindy, and said to the camera one, did you get him? Everything good? Did you get him, Sam? Sam was the cameraman, and Sam said, he didn't come on me. <laughs> Gary put a fourth camera on the floor that only followed Robin. It's only John. The cameraman's only job was to make sure that Robin was always on film. Because, and our script was 54 pages long. His script was 30 pages long. Because it always said, Robin will say something to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know how long we have. I don't know how much longer I have. Five more minutes. I have what? Five more minutes. I have two more, two minutes? Five. Five, Five minutes. minutes. Okay. We better do this quick. What sign? What sign? Is there somebody over here? Hi. Hi, Ms. Elizabeth. My name's Monica. And I wanted to know if you would be interested in doing like a superhero or a side by movie like Star Wars. You know what? I, I would always be interested as long as it was fun and there was a character. I am now, uh, this is where I became um, very picky. Is there a calorie in what I'm doing? If it's like eating celery and there's no reason to do the, the character, they could cut it right out of the film, I say no. And I say to the director, you know what? There are no calories here. Uh, there's no reason to do this. I was in one superhero movie. I'm in Black Adam for 10 seconds by myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think